the all-new Porsche 911 GT3 is an extraordinary car. We knew that before we conducted this test, and we're even more certain of it now. But there is one car from Lamborghini that, on paper at least, should give the new 130 grand, 503 bhp, 198 mile an hour GT3 a very hard time indeed. And that is the rear wheel drive Huracan Evo you see here, which costs a bit more than the Porsche, but also boasts more power from its 5.2 litre V10 engine, produces even more noise and looks a fair bit more dramatic than the muscular new GT3. We drove these amazing cars for two days straight on both road and track, and at the end we reached one very simple conclusion about them, which we'll come to in a bit. In the meantime, Porsche first, welcome to one of the best roads in Britain. I'm not sure that life gets an awful lot better on four wheels than this. The new 911 GT3, 992 version GT3, on a beautiful Welsh mountain road. It's just before seven o'clock at night. There's a lovely orange thing in the sky up there called the sun. And this car is just incredible. The GT3 is very obviously a car that's focused on the track, but unlike some of its predecessors, this one is entirely usable on the road as well, with a range of different settings for its dampers and drivetrain that enable you to dial it right in to whatever road you're driving on. In any mode though, there's still a fair bit of road noise to contend with thanks to its wide Michelin Pilot Cup 2 tyres. And although the ride is okay on most UK roads, the GT3 is never what you'd call civilised. I mean, it just blows you away on every level, this thing. It's so quick, so precise, so agile, considering how big it is. But I'm really surprised at how refined it is on the road, how usable it is on a road like this. OK, we're not talking about the twistiest road in the universe or the bumpiest. So as public roads go, this is going to suit the GC3 down to the ground. But my goodness me, it is so such a lovely car this, and it is such a flipping weapon. Get a load of this. Nine thousand revs. Nine thousand. It's just a, epic in every way. This car it stops brilliantly. The steering is really lovely. It's quite light on the road. The GT3 steering, but you just know what the front end is to the nearest quarter of a millimeter. As you can probably hear, there's a lot of tire noise for an, a road car. There's not so much that you just think, oh my goodness me, I can't put up with that. I'm going to trailer it to a track because that's where a track is where you want to take this thing, of course it is. But no, this thing is so good at the road car, I'm blown away by it. So then, same beautiful road, same perfect conditions, but this time behind the wheel of a very different car. This thing feels pretty serious on this road. This thing feels pretty serious anywhere, actually. Over 600 horsepower in a mid-engine Lamborghini that Lamborghini says weighs considerably less than 1,400 kilograms dry. So let's say it weighs 1,500 kilograms, but it is only rear-wheel drive and it does have, I think it's 601 horsepower and it has a V10 engine that sounds like this. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what else this car does when it sounds like that. Fortunately though, it does all sorts of other things really, really well. I wasn't a massive fan of the Huracan when it first came out, but they have made it better and better and better. And this thing, the Evo, 
rear wheel drive Evo is just knockout, absolutely knockout. The Lambo looks, feels, sounds and just is a far more extrovert kind of car after the GT3. Yet it rides more comfortably than the Porsche in street or strada mode and it has less tyre noise. Put it in Corsa mode though, which dials everything right up to 11 and beyond and the Huracan Evo almost turns into a caricature of itself. Only then does it reveal its true colours and they are very bright indeed. I mean, get a load of that. It just makes the flipping hairs on the back of your neck stand to attention. But all the rest of this car is now just as good as the motor. It doesn't feel leery. It doesn't feel like some kind of a wild animal. In fact, most people, I guarantee you, would not be able to tell that this thing was rear wheel drive rather than four wheel drive. Except perhaps for what goes on here, because the steering of the Evo rear wheel drive Huracan is definitely a bit nicer than the four wheel drive version. It's just, I'm really struggling to find faults with this car. But this is the bit I love about it most. So then we headed south, down to our favourite track at Landau, to find out a bit more about these two very different supercars. GT3 first, this is what happened next. I mean, this place, doing this kind of thing, is the GT3's natural habitat. It is a lovely car to drive up on those beacons, Brecon Beacons Road. It's beautiful. It's it just does things to your soul, this car, that not really any other cars do. With the possible exception of the Lamborghini, but this is the GT3's natural habitat. This is where you bring your GT3 to really get under its skin. And this is why the brakes on this car, just massive. Listen to the motor, listen to that. Fantastic gearbox as well. And the front end on this new GT3, 992 GT3, is, I think, quite a lot better than the old 991 GT3. It weighs a bit more than the last generation GT3, but the nose, the grip, the bite from the nose in this thing, on this track, it's just awesome. This car is just awesome. This is not one of those tests where I'm going to say, so, go on then, which one would you put your money in? It is not like that. That Lamborghini is fabulous in so many ways. And the GT3 is fabulous in maybe just a couple more ways, but I'm not going to commit. I'm not going to commit because they're very different. Okay, they're, they're both kind of track focused, lightweight versions of already fab sports cars. But they're very different in their approach. The Lamborghini's all about flamboyance and kind of attitude and swagger. This thing, this is just functional. The fact that it's also beautiful to look at. I don't know, you'd have them both. You would want them both. Don't ask me which one I'd put my money in. It might be this one, but I didn't say that. Okay, thanks. But then that's the thing about cars as intoxicating as this. Whichever one you find yourself driving at any particular moment in time, you inevitably end up warming to the most, until you climb into the other one, at which point your opinion shifts. And so it goes. Anyway, this is what the Lambo is like to drive on the track. It's very different from the GT3, obviously. It's mid-engine, not rear-engine, we know that 
but you do feel like you're sitting right at the front of really quite a sharp object. And although Lamborghini have done massive amounts of work to make the Huracan just more stable, sharper, more dynamic, lighter, better, you still ultimately feel like there's quite a big engine just there, ready to overtake you if you do the wrong thing. And of course, when you're on a track like this one, it's very tempting to just kind of reach for the button and switch everything off, which I have done. It's a shame that I'm not going to get the stopwatches out, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, basically, whenever you do that, Lamborghini like to bring a small army of technicians with them, which is fair enough. They want their car to perform to the absolute maximum of its potential and you can't really do that at the moment. So they've asked us not to get the stopwatch out, so I'm not going to get the stopwatch out, which is a bit of a shame because this thing does feel properly fast around the track. Come on! That is what this thing is all about. Wow, such a good gearbox as well. It just feels light, it feels agile, it feels sharp. It sounds the business, this car, it really does. It's trouble is these good, these new Lamborghinis, this Evo Lamborghini, they're just, they've just made them so much better than they used to be. You can't help but get completely carried away in them, especially on a track. It's a lovely thing to drive on a road. The way it was it used to be with Lamborghinis is that they'd have all the drama and all the noise and they'd be fabulous to look at. Not that great to drive on the road. And then you take the track and they'd either break or just be rubbish to drive. N -n -n -n, not with this thing. This thing is lovely to drive on the road and seriously good to drive on the track. I'm not gonna say whether I prefer that to that. They are both leading fabulous and let's leave it at that bellissima so after two days of driving them back to back on road and track our conclusion was clear there is no loser in this test which by default also means there's no clear winner either because in their own individual ways the 911 GT3 and Hurricane Evo provide different but equally compelling answers to the same question and both are addictively appealing as a result. So whichever one you might prefer personally, well it doesn't really matter in the end because cars like this have probably reached their peak now anyway. In a few years time, Porsche and Lamborghini simply won't be making cars like this anymore. So let's celebrate them both, while we still can. Cheers for watching, the end. <laughs>